Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the GRCV podcast. My name is Gavin Campbell, and alongside me, as always, my good friend, Ricardo Vargas. Glad to be here with you, talking some basketball like always. Uh, today, we're going to finish up uh, some trades that we uh, started talking about, recapping the uh, NBA offseason from last week. Uh, we didn't get through all of them because there was there was a lot of action going on, wasn't there? So much, so much, and we really couldn't talk about it all. Uh, so we've got we've got six more trades here, or seven if you want to count one. It's kind of a two for one deal. Uh, the ones that we have left to talk about on top of the list here, we're going to talk about Jonathan Simmons uh, coming off his season with the San Antonio Spurs, signed with the Orlando Magic on a three year, twenty million dollar deal. Um, for me personally, I'm glad that he finally got paid. I think not just last season, but the season before that, he was really coming around and becoming becoming a solid role player for that team. And towards the end of the season this year. Uh, he really he really showed that he might be able to be that number two, possibly number one guy on another team. We really don't know that much about him yet. Yeah, I, I agree. Like I think he can have like a kind of like a breakout season this year with the Orlando Magic. You know, sometimes these guys just shock you of what they can do. Look at C J McCollum a few years back, how he broke out into the scene. Jonathan Simmons, he was in a good on a an amazing team. He probably learned a lot of things. Great player, super athletic. And for that price, I think it was really worth it. Like, you know? I, I think it's a steal. I mean, especially if it's going to be someone's first payday. I mean, I'm not going to turn down $20 million. I mean, this is a guy that started off with a D-League entry fee and right. is now making $20 million on you know, the, an Orlando Magic team that really has a lot of potential. There's a lot of talent on the team, young talent, in a fact. A lot, yes. Yes, yes. Like, and, you know, it's good for both sides. Good for the Orlando Magic. They're going to be a great player. And good for Jonathan Simmons. He's getting – some good money, and if there's if there's any if there's any franchise that you want to start your career with, it's definitely the San Antonio Spurs. I can't oh. think of another coach, maybe besides, you know, perhaps uh, you know that guy up in Boston, <laughs> <laughs> Brad Stevens. Um, he would he would probably be towards the top of my list. But if you're going to learn from anyone, uh, it would probably be Greg Popovich. Yeah, it's a great organization to be a part of, and I was I'm happy for him, and I wish him the best this season. Absolutely. Uh, the next uh, one we have. On the list here, as uh, we briefly touched on this last week, was uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope signing a one-year, eighteen million dollar deal with the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, Rick, how do you think that uh, KCP will fit into this Lakers squad? Very young, very talented. You know, there's a lot of youth on that team. Just give me your thoughts on that. Like, I think he's going to fit in perfectly. He's going to average a good amount of points. He's going to score, hit the, those three pointers, and I think he'll be a uh, he'll have a good role for the team. You know, he is. He is young, but at the same time, he's he's older than like these rookies, like Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, and all of them. Like he can be like a mentor. He's a high character guy, and he can score. And the Lakers do need that, and I think he's going to fit in perfectly as a great role player. I'd, I'd have to agree with you. I I can remember two years ago uh, when the Detroit Pistons made the playoffs in the first round, uh, going against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, KCP was a big part of what what kept the Pistons in those games. You know, his right, three point exactly. shooting and his defense, his tenacity. I mean, he's he's a really solid player. And uh, I'm I'm sad to see him leave Detroit, but I I think Detroit right now is uh, it, it's kind of a miscombobulated franchise. If you if picking up what I'm putting down, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the Pistons it's a little iffy, you know. Like they have Reggie Jackson, they're paying him so much money. Andre Drummond, I really don't know what's going on up there in Detroit, but I'm happy for KCP. He's gonna he's going to a good a good situation for him. Now, when uh, with KCP, do you think that he gets thrown into the starting lineup with uh, Alonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, and Julius Randle in them, or do you think that he comes off the bench and the Lakers start uh, Jordan Clarkson? Like, I would start him, honestly. I think Jordan Clarkson's better off the bench, but, you know, you never know. Hope Maybe he fits in better like a sixth man. You, it's all about just testing with the – they're really young. They just got to test different lineups and see what uh, what's best for them. Does this one-year deal perhaps indicate that – KCP is going to be moving on from L.A. after this year? I think because he's going to uh, do well with the Lakers, I think he'll re-sign with them, honestly. You really think so? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think he's going to do good. The Lakers will be better, and it's going to be a perfect match, so I think he will end up re-signing. You know, I, I think he would like to live in L.A. You know, I, I don't think anyone would turn that down. <laughs> <laughs> with that much money for one year? <laughs> I think I think for me, I can see – I can see why the Lakers would want to re-sign him. If it was me, I would definitely want to get him on a long-term deal. Yes. Um, but I think the Lakers' motive, uh, from what 
you know, the articles that are out there and from what we hear on sports media and all this uh, <laughs> that's going around is that I think the Lakers are trying to clear up cap space. And I think this one-year deal could implicate that uh, after this year, that's $18 million off the books that they can use to maybe bring in a couple big-name free agents. You know, Paul George is a big name that's been thrown around in there as well as LeBron James. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of rumors with that. And, um, like, maybe he does resign but uh, for – for not too much money, but I really don't know. Yeah, and I, I do hear they they want they want LeBron James. You know, I know Lavar wants him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine, I can't imagine LeBron and Lavar in the same arena for forty one for forty one <laughs> games this season. I just, <laughs> I honestly can't either. I'm sorry. <laughs> not not too much to say about that, really. I still think LeBron is he'll. I I think that he'll remain in Cleveland. Uh, you if, think so? To to me, I just I think that he's at that point in his career that I I really don't think he has anything left to prove. I mean, he does. He's he said he said repeatedly that you know like I'm chasing the ghost of Chicago. We all know who that ghost is, the greatest of all time, Michael Jordan. Okay, I just I just don't think for LeBron that it it should matter now. I mean, the guy has been to what is it? What is it? Eight? Sounds eight straight like, NBA yeah. finals. I think it's nine overall. Is it? Yeah, eight, three, three and five. I think it's just eight, seven straight, and then he had that one in uh, two thousand, was it two thousand nine, uh, two thousand ten, two thousand nine, I believe, where he uh, got swept by the San Antonio Spurs. I can't remember. Hey, well, I could think have been oh seven, two thousand seven. 2007. That's what it was. Yeah, two thousand seven, where he got swept by the Spurs. That that Cleveland team was not supposed to be there. No, like you see, you saw early on what LeBron can do, and he doesn't have anything else to prove. He's still going to dominate. And, you know, he doesn't have anything else to prove, honestly. I, I think for him, if he just wants to play out, you know, the remainder of his career, whether that be another eight years, we don't know how much longer he's going to be in the league for. But if it's me, you know, the hometown kid, I'm just going to I'm gonna play it out in Cleveland. You know, I know he's had his stint with the owner, Dan Gilbert, and Cleveland management as a whole. But, I mean, that's that's his city, you know. I mean, and he, he, is, he is king. Right, like you might as well just stay. Like I don't know personally, I think when to, when a good player like he goes onto different teams, like little Rondo, all these different teams. I don't know, it just ruins their legacy a, a bit. I, yeah, doesn't it? It ruins like look at Kobe. You know, one one team, twenty years. That would be nice to see LeBron. You know, he, he was with the Heat, but I would like to see him finish it off in Cleveland. You know, it would be a perfect story. Just a little while in Miami, but ended up in Cleveland. Exactly, exactly. I know, I know that he said. Uh, in a letter that that he wrote, uh, that his years in Miami were like, like a quote unquote college for him. It was it was it was a growing up period for him where he left he left as a kid and he came back to Cleveland a grown man. Right. It it really it it was a nice story and I think he, it would be ruined if he goes to a n- different team. Like I just can't uh, see LeBron retiring as a Laker. I just <laughs> I just would not want to see a second burning. Actually, really, a third burning of the LeBron James jersey. Yeah, neither. I just think I. that's so disrespectful, and I I understand that fans can be passionate, but uh, there's there's really no need for that. There is. I'm sorry, I wouldn't do that. <clears throat> now, tell me, tell me, I want to talk about this. Toronto Raptors re-signed Serge Ibaka. Uh, well, I can tell you that as a Raptors fan, this is uh, this is great news. Uh, when they brought in Serge Ibaka and PJ Tucker last year, I was I was ecstatic. I thought that you know those two guys. Uh, having having them on the floor for their defensive abilities and Ibaka definitely boosts the offense a little bit, but mainly the defensive end of the floor. I know the Raptors were in the lower the lower half of the league when it came to defensive efficiency, and I I, I knew that that would bring it up, and I thought that we would have no thought. I want to put emphasis on thought, okay? <laughs> that that would give us some chance against the Cavs because it was bound to happen. Uh, Toronto and Cleveland. Uh, I yeah. I really didn't expect them to get swept because last year I know that they went. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they went four to two in the playoffs, uh, with Cleveland ultimately winning that series and going to the finals. Um, having said that, I just I think that it's a great piece for them because we don't know when LeBron is going to slow down, if he ever will slow down. This guy seems like a well-oiled machine, and he's already 32 years of age. He's not slowing down at all. I I still think that he's got another solid three, four, five years left in him. Um, I just I I, I like what the Raptors are doing, but that's like any other team. It's like, okay, so you add a few pieces here, you add this guy here, maybe trade away that guy, get a pick here. It's, it, if you're in the East, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. We all know that LeBron's going to the finals again. And Man, I don't know I, about that. I don't know about that. Okay, let me, let me rephrase that. I believe the majority of us think that LeBron will be in the finals again. And 
I just I, I, I like what the Raptors are doing. I, I've always uh, – Masai Ujiri has done a great job as general manager. I just – I, I would I would like for him to build maybe for further into the future where there is no LeBron James. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Like being in the East with LeBron, it's really tough to do anything. But like I do like the Raptors. They do have you know they've they've had good seasons. They have two star players, but it's just once you're facing the King, it's a whole different story. It seems like all they've worked for is just for nothing. You know it exactly, is. exactly. And I can attest to that watching many. Toronto games throughout the season it's like it's great to see the team that you love perform you know at its highest level and you know go up against some decent competition in the east let's not act like they're entire pushovers especially last year there were there were a handful of teams that were okay I mean you know especially Boston and Washington and teams and teams like that but knowing that the ultimate goal is you losing to LeBron every year is it's just disheartening as a fan knowing that no matter what you do, no matter who you acquire, unless you're Golden State, <laughs> there's there's no winning in the East. Yeah, it really sucks. And I don't even want to imagine how the players feel. Like, it must be tough. Like, you know, they are playing with their hearts. You know, they're, they're right. giving it all they got, but still not enough. <laughs> oh, it is. It Same is. with Boston, you know. <laughs> and and believe me, we both, we both can attest to uh, losing to LeBron. Many, many times throughout the playoffs. Psst. However, moving on, <laughs> I know that I know that uh, you were really intrigued by this move by the New York Knicks signing Tim Hardaway Jr. to a four-year, seventy-one million dollar contract. I'm going to repeat that again. Tim Hardaway Jr. signs a four-year, seventy-one million dollar contract with the New York Knicks. What were they thinking? Uh, I'll tell you, they weren't thinking. That is just way too much money. For a guy who averages fourteen points, three rebounds, and two assists a game, and I'm a, I'm a Tim Hardaway Jr. fan. I I loved watching him play last I year. I like with the him Hawks, too. I but like this him is too. ridiculous. Like he's a role, he's a really really good role player, but he definitely doesn't deserve seventy one million for four years. Like that's just crazy. Uh, that's a crazy move by the Knicks. And I think that that's the key word right there is that he's very good, but a role player. Exactly. Like you know. And the and the thing is, they had him. He was used to be. He used to be on the Knicks. Exactly. So so you. This is the same guy that they traded away for virtually nothing, and then he had one good, you know, half a season with the Hawks, and now they want to throw all this money at him, when the top bid wasn't even over fifty million dollars. Why go so over the top for a guy that you were willing to part ways with two years ago? I really do not understand and that. What that's what makes it worse. Like the thing is, he was with the Knicks. If, you know, this is his first time going to the Knicks, okay, maybe I understand, you know, they're trying it out, but they already knew what he could do, you know. They saw what he did with the Hawks, pretty good, but that's just crazy money they could have invested in somebody else. Exactly, and and the Knicks need someone else to go alongside Christoph Porzingis because we all know Melo's not going to be there forever, and he's already on the decline. Exactly, like, I I don't know. I just, this is, this is a real head-scratcher for me by New York, but... I'm definitely not surprised in any way. This this is New York. These are the Knicks. This <laughs> that, is what they do. You you have to expect moves like these from them. Now, Tim, if, if we if we can dive into Tim Hardaway Jr. a little bit, I I know that last year he did have a few uh, highlight moments. You he know, did, he, did. he 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 had uh, that the one game actually I believe it was against New York where they went into three or four overtimes, and he was a huge part of keeping Atlanta in that game. Right, right. Yeah, no, he's he he he. I'm sorry. He had some crazy games last season. I mean, he's definitely no slouch. I just, I don't agree with seventy-one million dollars. Now, if you wanted to, even, even, and this is with the salary cap increasing, I just don't see him as a guy that's worth, you know, almost fifteen million, over fifteen million dollars a year. I mean, if you, if you wanted to give him, you know, a four-year, forty million dollar contract to be your best role player, one of the best role players really out there, then that's fine. But this is not a guy that. He he really shouldn't even be starting, and they're giving him starter money, right. so he's he's gonna have to start. Exactly, man. Shoot, might as well just give me Jonathan Simmons. I'd rather have <laughs> him for that money. Exactly, and Jonathan Simmons and Tim Hardaway are are similar players, really. I mean, they're both athletic; they can both score. And why is one making fifty more million dollars than the other? <laughs> because he plays for New York, and they always overpay for players. This is nothing new. Like I don't understand. Hopefully, he proves us wrong. He has an amazing season, but based on what we've seen from him. Like I really don't think it was a good move. But I would love nothing more for 
Tim Hardaway Jr. to prove us wrong. Because I, I love exactly. the kid. He's a great exactly. player. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. But it is what it is. But now let's compare it to this this move. Rudy Gay to the Spurs for $17 million, two years. This is this is something that I not not just me, but I know a lot of people have criticized Rudy Gay, and I can I can attest to him uh, playing with the Toronto Raptors back in the day for a few seasons. Is that Rudy Gay is a great scorer, okay, but he doesn't really do much else. He really doesn't do much else, exactly, just how you said. But knowing it's the Spurs, they will find a way to put him in the system, and he will have one of his best seasons, not statistically, but just in general. I, and I agree I agree with you 110% because Rudy Gay, I think, is a guy that can really flourish in a Greg Popovich system. Really, I would say 90% of the players in the league can flourish from being in a Spurs system. You know, just being in the mindset of, of how basketball really is supposed to be played. They're really the only franchise that, you know, 99% of the time, you know, shares the ball with everyone. There's You, you always see the Spurs – like I said, 99% of the time, they move the basketball, okay? They're, they're, they always look for the open guy. There is no one person that has to take the shot on every possession. And they have Kawhi Leonard. Exactly. Like, I don't know how, how they're going to um, put him in the system, but imagine him coming off the bench for Kawhi Leonard. That's crazy. If, if Rudy Gay is is your, your backup small forward, <laughs> is your backup small forward, then other teams should, should be afraid, not just because of – that it is Rudy Gay, but because now it's the Spurs, and he's in a he's in a great position to do Rudy Gay things because he will learn. He already knows how to score, and they will they will put him into the mindset of okay, I need to pass the ball. Okay, I need to find the open man. Okay, let's get a good shot. Exactly, and even if that doesn't happen, and all he does is score, that'll be great for their second unit. Bam, you got a guy that can uh, score twenty points in one game, thirty points in one game. Bam, right there, off your bench. That's pretty crazy. And he gives Kawhi Leonard a break. And it's absolute, he's absolutely capable of scoring 20 or 30 points a night. I mean, even, um, even if he's only playing 25 minutes. When Rudy Gay gets hot, I mean, we've seen, him, we've seen him score 40-something points. I've been a fan of his game for a long time. Oh, absolutely. Even, even in Sacramento, I mean, no one's watching the Sacramento Kings, especially two years ago. But Rudy Gay has taken over games before, and we've seen it not just there. We've seen it in Memphis. We've oh, seen yeah. it in Toronto. I mean, yes. this guy has been a scorer his entire career. It's just he hasn't had any other skill set, you know, defined skill set to go along with him scoring the basketball. Exactly. I remember um, when he was in Memphis, and I think it was LeBron's first year in Miami, he hit that game winner on LeBron James's face. One of my favorite moments. He's definitely not afraid of the big moment. He's, He's not. absolutely not afraid of the big moment. And I think now adding him to the Spurs, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that that puts them – over Golden State, but they're definitely a lot closer, if not at the same level, because we saw in the playoffs just a few months ago, before Kawhi Leonard went down, which I still think is a dirty play, but that's a different story for a different day. Um, uh, you just need to know I'm not the biggest Zaza Pachulia fan. Um, before Kawhi went down, they were handling Golden State at the Oracle, <laughs> up by 20-something points in the second quarter. Yeah, exactly. And I'll they bring in Rudy Gay, like, watch out for the Spurs. Like, They're, they're definitely a team to watch. And even though some people are like, oh, the Spurs play boring. They're so, they're so monotonous. It's like, that's good basketball. It is. If, you're, if it you're a true fan of the game, that's good basketball. They're just trying to win games. And, like, I, even myself, personally, I, I always sleep on the Spurs, and they always prove me wrong. Oh, myself included, every year. I always you forget ne- about that. Even, even thinking about the Spurs now, it's like, when you think of the Spurs, do you think of the five titles they've won in 18 years? No. no, you don't, because it's the Spurs. <laughs> but moving on, uh, we have one more here before we jump into the next segment of the show. Um, the Dallas Mavericks re-signed Nerlens Noel to a one-year, $4.1 million contract. Um, I think this is a great move for Dallas uh, because they haven't really had a a stable big man for a few years now other than Dirk Nowitzki, but we all know Dirk is a stretch four. They haven't had a true big man like Noel. Uh, you know, Noel's game does give them a, uh, I say, a, a more, of a, more of a presence inside because we know Dirk's uh, only increasing in age every single year, even though, I mean, he, he can still score the basketball. He can, shoot. He can um, still get buckets. I just, I just, I really like this move. I don't really have anything specific for him. I've always been a fan of Noel. Um, same here, same In, here. in uh, Philadelphia when he was there, uh, you know, playing. I thought it was really weird when they had, you know, Embiid, Embiid. Okafor, Okafor, and it was, Noel. It was weird. The the triple center threat, whatever you want to call it, I, that was just really strange. But I'm glad that you know he's he's that 
excuse me, the second half of the season uh, when he was in Dallas this year, um, his numbers weren't flashy, but you know you could see you could see the potential and the chemistry that was uh, accumulating uh, with the team, and I think also adding uh, the uh, the Mavericks adding Dennis Smith Jr. Uh, that's another guy uh, you know to help out Noel you know raise his his level of play. Oh yeah, I think they can uh, play really well off each other, and like in Philadelphia, no- Noel he's he's be- he's been injured. That really wasn't a good system for him. Way too many centers. I think he could flourish his next uh, next season, and he can prove himself to be a max contract type of guy. He wanted a big contract uh, this offseason, but he didn't get it, of course. But now with this, he has to prove himself that he does deserve that money, and I think he will. Um, I think he'll play really well. He's a great defensive player, and I think he has he, he has some, he has an offensive game that he can you know. Right. Oh, there's always room for improvement with him. Oh. You know, he's he's only good within three feet you know he, he has no jump shot whatsoever but you can see that he's he's been improving that he's, he's always been improving uh his, you know his his feet his footwork and uh you know his post moves and he's always been great on the defensive side of the ball i mean oh yeah his <laughs> his his block highlight tape is, is it's fun to it, watch it goes on and on but no like you said i mean this is a contract year for him and i think that he's not only playing for a spot on dallas i mean he's playing for a spot anywhere anywhere exactly see he needs to prove himself that he can play in the nba and he's had a good big man and he won't get injured i think he can be a, at least a double 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 type of guy absolutely absolutely um and with that said uh, that's going to conclude the trade segment um crazy off awesome. from from the off season uh, it's crazy that that took uh an episode and a half to get through but there's been a lot and we mean a lot of moves happening in the last three months or so Right, it's it's like how we said it's been crazy, hectic, and even the draft has some crazy moments too. You know, starting with the trading of those two, uh, that number one and number three pick. Absolutely, the Boston Celtics and the Philadelphia 76ers swapped the uh, first and third picks in the NBA draft. With uh, uh, Boston also didn't they acquire was it another first round pick or a second yeah, round? Another, another first round, future first round pick from Philly. Um, and with that, the Sixers. Drafted Markel Fultz, uh, the stud point guard out of Washington. Um, I I really, really, really like this pick uh, for Philly. Um, everyone knew it was coming uh, when they when they did announce the trade was official. Um, this is Rick. This is a guy that averaged over twenty three points a game in college. Granted, his team didn't do a lot of winning, but he didn't have anyone else around him. Um, he had to do it all. And by all we. We really do mean all. I mean, not just the 23 points a game. I mean, almost six assists and almost six rebounds a game to go with one and a half steals and almost one and a half blocks a game. And this, he also shot 41.3% from three. I mean, this this is a complete player. Philly is getting a complete player. To, not, to go along with another almost complete player, Ben Simmons, he just needs to develop a jump shot. But this is the guy that well, would have been two years ago now that people were comparing to a young LeBron. <laughs> yeah, like... It's it's insane that Philly has three once in a ger- once in a generation type players with Joel, uh, Ben, and Markel. I think Markel is going to be amazing with the 76ers. He's going to play very similar to how he played in Washington, and I do think they'll be able to uh, play with each other. Those big three. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you have if you have the re- if you have a young stud like LeBron and Ben Simmons. And then you have the reincarnation of Hakeem Olajuwon with a three-pointer in Joel Embiid. As long as they stay healthy. Health is – that's the thing. That's the key. That's the key for them. Health is the biggest and probably the only concern with the 76ers. They have so – they have all the talent in the world. Throwing J.J. Redick. And uh, they also uh, acquired Amir Johnson. Amir Johnson. I mean, they, Robert Covington. I'm a fan of Robert I, Covington. And Robert Covington is probably one of the most underrated – and I, I know I said underrated a lot in the last episode, but – not just underrated. He's one of my favorite players. He is. He, yeah. He might not be the best shooter. He might not be the best scorer. He might not be the best three point shooter. But there, there is something about Robert Covington. You know. Yes. He's he's a hard worker. He's a hustler. You know. <laughs> he he gets after it. Every team needs that. They need a guy like Robert. And they have they have their guy in uh, in Covington. And I think just that that whole 76ers team. You know, coming together. I mean, when you have Fultz, Simmons, Covington, Embiid, Redick. Johnson. I mean, that's you have a solid, you know, six players, and then you know they also have uh, uh, their bench is deep with youth. So uh, D- Dario and Sar- how can we forget Dario oh, Sarge with the year he had? Was he? He was second, second, second in rookie of the year yes. voting. 
uh, the guy's the guy is a stud. The the guy uh, from Serbia, wasn't it? Yep, Serbia. And he is, I mean, definitely definitely slept on, especially this season. <laughs> I mean, I almost forgot about him right now. Exactly, and we just we just don't talk about him enough. I mean, I would imagine that he would be in the starting lineup. I, I don't he, think he that, he really does need. I to. don't think Amir Johnson would be starting over him. <laughs> but this this team has so much potential and so much upside that if everything does go right, like I think it it will for them. They've already they've paid their dues. Okay, the injury bug has oh plagued them goodness. for long enough. I think this team. Like I said last week, I'll reiterate, they will be a top five seed in the Eastern Conference if everything goes right. Philly deserves it. Philly deserves it. If anything, team. the fans deserve it. Man, like, just do it for the fans. <laughs> Don't do it for anything. Just do it for the fans. But let me ask you this. Out of Fultz, Simmons, and Embiid, who do you think is going to have the best career? Oh, jeez. Is health? Yeah, health is not an issue. Like, let's just say all three are going to be healthy. I like Embiid. Embiid? I like Joel Embiid. And that's... My my answers could change after this season, after I see Simmons and Fultz play. Right. But I've I've seen what Embiid can do, and if I'm going strictly off what I've seen, I have to go with Joel. Embiid, like the the, the little that he did play last season, he was an absolute monster. <laughs> I think I think uh, like some of the analysts said, you know, on those uh, sports networks, if if Embiid plays ten more games, he's rookie of the year. He's he's played half the season, he's rookie of the year. There's no question about it. Oh yes, for sure. Like, and he, and if he plays a, a lot of minutes and the entire season next season, he could be fighting for an MVP. I wouldn't be surprised if Joel Embiid in the next, if he's healthy, you know, next three, four, maybe five years, you know, MVP. MVP. He, he's going to be fighting for one. He might be able to. And the, and as well as Ben Simmons, and, and I think Markel will. This, the the Sixers are going to be interesting. I mean, if 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 you're if you are a Sixers fan or even a basketball fan, you should be excited for Philly this year. Yeah, and this is good for the for NBA and for the Eastern Conference. Absolutely, which the needs East, more. The East needs more teams like this, better teams, just more competition. More competition. Now, I'm happy, you know, more competition in the East. You know, more more excitement. I want to see them on TNT on the weekends. I think if uh, I think if Philly gets more uh, primetime games, you know. Just you know, getting more attention to this to the city. They haven't really had a lot to cheer about, you know. And Joel Embiid last yeah. year, they, I mean, they had a little something there for about 20, yeah. 20, 28 games or so. And I think that's the happiest I've ever seen Philly in <laughs> probably the last seven or eight years. Exactly. No. <laughs> the, only, the only other thing I know about Philly is um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> that's the second. Best the sun's definitely coming back there. Uh, <laughs> it mo- is. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> moving on. Uh, the second overall pick. By the Los Angeles Lakers, Lonzo Ball. Man, so much hype with Lonzo. I, I think I think for being the second overall pick, he probably had twice as much hype as Markel Fultz did coming out of UCLA. It's insane. And like partially, like I do think he is really good. And I think that, that hype, you know, it's valid, but it's just a little bit too much, you know? I I think I think it his father had more hype, had had to do with more hype, had, oh my gosh, I'm tripping on my words here. LeVar, his father, had more to do with the hype around his son than I think anything else. And that, I don't mean that negatively. I, it's not that I'm a Alonzo Ball hater because he's his ability to pass the ball is... is Crazy. It's it's unmatched by really the majority of the, of the league, uh, not just guards, but period. But the way that, you know, LeVar talks about his son that, you know, He's he's better than Steph Curry. He's he's better than Michael Jordan. Like there comes a point where you just need to be realistic and stop. You know? <laughs> exactly. Like at first, you know, it's entertaining, you know, a little fun and whatnot. And like Lonzo, he doesn't even talk that much. You know, he's he's very uh, low key and all, but he's very composed. Very composed, you know. He's a mature guy. And yeah, like with LeVar, like it did go a little overboard, I think, you know. But you know, it was a little fun during the whole off season. I, I, let's see what happens during the off, during during the season. I want to see what Lavar says, and I do think Lonzo Ball he is gonna live up to the hype we saw in the summer league. He played really well. I think I saw uh, it was either from today or yesterday. Uh, Lavar did a segment on ESPN, and he quoted saying that the Lakers would win. The over under was fifty games. <laughs> fifty games, <clears throat> like. <laughs> You want to talk about being realistic? Do you do you honestly believe in the Western Conference the Lakers will come close to fifty games? Maybe forty, maybe forty. I don't see them winning more than thirty six, if that. Like no, like they they're still extremely young. They it, it'll be a while till till they become good again, unless they get like a 
big time free agent. Absolutely. Season, which could most which I think happen. is what they're preparing for. Yeah, which I, I think it is going to happen. They they are going to get somebody next offseason. Whether who that is, we don't know, but I think with the amount of uh, money that they have in cap space and, you know, the, all of the youth that is around, all the young talent there, that's going to intrigue someone. Oh yeah, for sure. And like this season, they can't be that good because you know they they are so young, and it's not like the Warriors. You know they're they're super good, and they they can just mesh well. But this team, they, it's gonna take some time. They're gonna have some bad games. Absolutely, so, but if think. if there's someone that can be the catalyst, it's definitely Ball. Yeah, for um, sure. And he, I, he's the leader of that team. And I, I I'm very I'm very intrigued to see how how quickly he fit he fits into his role of of being you know that floor general like. Not the next, not the next Magic Johnson, but you know the the next role of of Magic. You know the the passing of Showtime. Bring Showtime back. That's what I'm curious to see. <laughs> and I think they will because you can't forget about Brandon Ingram. I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna have a really good season next year. Uh, we we saw him we saw him uh, briefly in one summer league game this season, and from the ten to fifteen minutes that he was on the floor, whether it was a fluke or not. He played outstanding against yeah. against you know NBA talent you know his age you know freshmen sophomores in the league he's super young and he he was he was just really impressive he was so impressive that you know he had a, he had a, it tweaked his ankle a sprained ankle and Magic said no that's it you're done you know he he thinks very highly of Brandon Ingram and not to say that Magic doesn't know what he's talking about but I mean maybe there's something there you know you never know we're we're not we're not in the gyms we don't we don't no. see what goes on behind the scenes exactly but no I do think uh, Ingram can be a 20 points per game scorer next season oh absolutely especially being on that team as the first or second option easy yeah and since Alonso you know he's not a scorer the he's got to give the ball to somebody Ingram's gonna be the one scoring <laughs> it's gonna be fun to watch them absolutely it's, but that that duo specifically not just the Lakers but that duo and how. You know they grow together is going to be very in- intriguing to watch. Oh yeah, and like Lonzo Ball, he's fun to watch. He makes his teammates better. He is a fun player to watch. And now, <laughs> but I I love Lonzo, but I think this next guy that we're going to say, Jason Tatum, I'm a huge fan of him, and personally from this draft, which is a very talented class, I think Jason's going to be the one with the best career overall. I think his game is super polished. He, it's his game is polished for a 19-year-old guy, and he's gonna he's not gonna get as much playing time as Lonzo. But when he does get that playing time with Boston, he's gonna flourish. He's gonna play well, and I think I just think he's gonna do really well in the league, and he's gonna be in the league for a very long time. I think of him like a call me crazy, but like a Kobe Bryant type of game. Kobe, like similar, you know, those tough shots. Doesn't like to pass. <laughs> I mean, I know that we saw, I know that we saw uh, his summer league games, and that he did hit some pretty impressive shots. But Kobe Bryant, I mean, he draw, he did get twenty seven points versus the Lakers and beat Lonzo Ball and the Lakers, and he hit some tough shots. He hit those fadeaways. He's a hard worker. I might be wrong, but like, oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not disregarding his uh, his work ethic or you know how 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 much talent that the kid possesses. But I mean, this is. This is a nineteen-year-old. This, this is a nineteen-year-old kid now. That's what, but that's what I'm saying. Like he has, he's already so his game is already so mature. I think he's he's very well developed. You you saw last season with Duke, he got better as the season progressed, and he was the leader of that team. I think he can be he can be a franchise type of player. I think what intrigues me the most about Jason Tatum is not not just that he is a complete player, like you said, he is polished. He shoots eighty-five percent from the free throw line. Now, how many other NBA players can you name that shoot over 85% from the line? <laughs> this guy's a rookie. Exactly. I mean, this is this is something, and free throws are very underrated to me, and I know it's not just me that think that. I mean, free throws do win games. That's not, they, they do. That's they not do. just a cliche. Now, if, if this kid is going to get playing time like Brad Stevens says that he will, we just don't know how, how much, you know. That's, that's going to play a key factor in later in the year or – two or his entire career you're shooting 85 percent coming in there's really not much room for improvement unless you know you're going to get up to steve nash level and shoot 93 (laughs) percent no exactly i think uh tatum like like how i said he's not going to get too much playing time but as the season progresses he could be uh in the game late making those tough shots even as a rookie like i could see him playing some good minutes towards the end of the season and in the playoffs alongside with Another favorite of mine, Jalen Brown. 
I think I think them um, getting getting to play together, similar to Lonzo and Brandon Ingram. Exactly. You know, uh, Brown now being the sophomore, sophomore. and <laughs> you know Tatum coming in as the freshman. You know, he can he can show them the ropes, and you know because they're of similar of age, you know they can. They can share in those experiences. You know, Brown can show him the ropes. And, you know, of course he'll learn from the veterans. You know, he'll learn right, from, exactly. from Kyrie and Gordon Hayward and those Al guys. Horford. Al Horford especially. Al, Al Horford's just a great teammate. He I know, is. I know some people criticize his game because he's definitely not flashy. He's he's, he's very monotonous and slow he in is. the way that he, he plays. But, I mean, if there's someone you want in the locker room, he's a great locker room guy. Just a great personality. Great guy, yeah. A perfect mentor for these young guys. Tell me this. Who do you think is going to be a better duo, Ingram and Ball? Or Tatum and Brown, the two number two picks and the two number three picks. I would, I would have to say, I would have to say, no, that's that's funny you say that. Two, two and two, and then three and three. I never noticed that before. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, man, I had to say just because they'll get more playing time, I'd have to say Lonzo and Brandon. But I, I think maybe later on, you know, when they when they do develop more, it it could be a toss up. I think Brown and Tatum have have you know the potential to get to that level of. You know, a superstar duo because Brown showed tremendous strength and athleticism. He's he's developing his jump shot. I mean, the his motor. I love his motor. You know, never uh, stops the way that he plays the game. You know, with with the intensity. You know, not not to that of you know like Russell Westbrook or anything, but you know, it's there. And I think you need some of that um, in order to survive in this league, to thrive in this league. You know, gotta have heart. And uh, I I just uh, I just still think ball. Ball and uh, Ingram will uh, probably be better this season together. Yeah, this season for sure they'll be definitely better, and but uh, we'll see. I, I think it's gonna be fun to watch them go head to head, ignite that uh, rivalry back, Celtics versus Lakers. Uh, speaking speaking of the Celtics, this is a guy that I I honestly thought um, that the Celtics would take, and Josh Jackson uh, going fourth overall to Phoenix. Um, this is this is a guy that I watched in Kansas throughout the year and throughout the NCAA tournament, and I I was nothing but impressed. Nothing but impressed. I mean, this is a guy, um, which is why I thought Boston would take him because he play he plays defense. This is this is a guy that's you know six ten, that plays D. He's very quick, very athletic, and he he can he can score the ball, but that's that's not the most important thing. You know, if you already have scores on your team, like you know, I knew they weren't going to have uh, Kyrie Irving, but they had a good idea that they would get Gordon Hayward, who is a scorer. Um, they still had Isaiah Thomas, who averaged 29 points a game last year. So they had scoring. So the thing that I thought Boston was missing was defense, and I thought Jackson could really help from from the get go. Right. You know right. that uh, to just improve uh, Boston defensively. You know whether it be uh, on the wing or you know helping out in the paint. Uh, he, he's just that. I feel like he's a down and dirty guy. You know, he's he's willing to do the things that don't show up on the stat sheet. And that counts a lot. I think he's a, a like a more polished Jalen Brown. Yes. Same type of motor, but a little bit better. Absolutely. And I I know that uh, this guy was was uh, talked highly of in uh, in the draft and uh, throughout the entire NCAA season last year. Um, I just I just think that Phoenix is getting. Phoenix is getting a maybe not complete player. I think I think on the offensive side of the ball, there's there's a little room. There's always room for improvement. But there, you yeah, know he could he could be a little bit better. You know, um, he he needs to be a little bit more of a playmaker. I think for that team. Um, I know Eric Bledsoe is, he's a great player, but he's he's not a facilitator. You know, he's not. Yeah, he's not. He's a scorer. Um, he's a, he's a really intense Gotta guy. But um, I I think I think that they'll get all of that worked out personally. But if Jackson can become more of a playmaker. Um, I think that that'll just complete him, and you know he'll he'll continue to grow throughout his NBA career, and perhaps right. be a superstar. No, yeah, and I agree. Like I think he could grow a lot in Phoenix because it's not like he's going to a a bad a, a, that bad like the record doesn't show up, but they're not that bad of a team. They have a lot of a good players. They have Devin Booker, uh, Eric Blatchel, Tyler Eulis, Marquis Chris, a lot of young guys that in a few years this Suns team could be really good. Like Devin Booker is a flat out star already. I think like he no he's just, he's gonna be a flat out star real soon. Like he, the guy can score. Tyler Eulis, I love his game, and Marquise Chris, like those th- big three. And plus, you and Josh Jackson. I think that's that's gonna be a good team, a, a team, a playoff team that can compete for the West. Absolutely. In a few years. Absolutely. Oh, in a few years, there's no doubt in my mind that with that roster, the way it's set up. And the potential that it has, probably within the next four or five years, they 
they will be in the top half of the Western Conference in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, this team has a lot of potential, and please don't sleep on it. This team reminds me almost of the Minnesota Timberwolves yeah, in yeah. a way because yeah. this will be the – we'll see the third or fourth year. The third? Third. The right. third year that the, that the Timberwolves have been going through this process, and they're, they're destined to make the playoffs now. And if the Suns continue on this path, uh, history is bound to repeat itself, and in you know three, four, five years, they will get to that point. Yeah, and if I'm a big name free agent, I wouldn't mind going down there to Phoenix to play. Honestly. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe not this upcoming off season, but maybe the one after, where we where we have you know more more a, a larger free agent pool. Yeah. That don't be surprised if one, perhaps two, if the money's right. Head to Phoenix. Yeah, I would love to play with those young guys, and it could they a superstar could lead that team to an NBA Finals. Absolutely. If if Devin Booker is your second or third option, oh my goodness. on a team, you're you're probably going to the conference finals or At have least. a good shot. Yes. Um, yes. But moving on down the list, this this is a guy that is one of my favorites, and I'm I'm very very surprised that he fell this far in the draft. Um, taken by Sacramento. Uh, fifth overall, De'Aaron Fox from Kentucky. This this is this is a guy that I watched. Uh, I didn't I didn't watch Kentucky uh, as much as I watched Kansas. I probably saw I maybe mean, five or six games, but every single game that I saw De'Aaron Fox in, I just I just couldn't take my eyes off the screen. I'm like this this is a guy that's ready for the NBA. Oh my goodness! I mean yes. Even even though I know that he has some shooting issues, you know he's he not, does. But he can score if you if you can if you can take the ball to the rack and get fouled, you know, or just or just put it in, you'll get the and one. What? Why do you need to shoot? I mean, it's the same thing with Ben Simmons. I mean, like he's he's a facilitator, but we know he can score inside. He's got a decent mid range. You know, not that I'm comparing De'Aaron Fox to Ben Simmons because Ben Simmons is almost a foot taller than. <laughs> but that's that's not the point. The point is is that he's he's he is probably. I wouldn't say the most complete, but if you're gonna if you're gonna do a, a top three, he's he definitely has to be in there. And this is a guy that averaged seventeen five and four, uh, with one and a half steals. Okay, he can't he can't shoot threes. He he shot less than twenty five percent from the three point line, which is concerning. And I, I understand why NBA teams would be turned off by that. But I mean, he still shot seventy four percent from the free throw line. So you know, if he gets fouled, that he has a good chance to get those two points back. Uh, to me. He's uh he's he's just a laid back guy, you know. He he likes to have fun when he yes, plays. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And he he loves he loves his teammates. He likes to get his teammates involved. And he's he's just he's just one of those people that you would love to have on your team. You know, if any anyone that watched De'Aaron Fox play, you would say, "Yeah, I I want that guy on my team." You know. Yeah, he um you know just like uh, John Wall, both Kentucky guys. He reminds me a lot of John Wall. Absolutely, a super fast player. He can pass the ball. He can get inside, and if De'Aaron Fox, which he will have to develop that jump shot and that three point shot, that's unnecessary in today's game. He has to like he can be a superstar in this league, and alongside Buddy Hield, uh, Sky Labissier, that's an that's another young team with the Kings. I think De'Aaron Fox can have a long successful career. He's super quick, a defensive type of guy. Like he's he's NBA ready. Absolutely, yeah. I think this is this is uh, the turning point for the Kings as an organization because we all know that they've screwed up their draft picks oh. time and time and time again through the last few years. And I know Kings fans, well, some of them, some were happy to see DeMarcus go. But when they traded DeMarcus Cousins, I mean, that that was the end of the era. You know, that was the end of Boogie Cousins because uh, he's now playing alongside the Brow in, uh, <laughs> in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, but, it was an end of an era, and I'm happy for the Kings because – they they just need they just need to start fresh and I think they're doing a good job with these young guys that they have. Absolutely, they got to steal with Scalabis here. They have Buddy Hill. They traded for him. A very very good player. He's gonna be he's he's gonna be a great player. And De'Aaron Fox, I think that big three right there, it's gonna be good. I think uh, not not just that, but Willie Cauley Stein came Willie along. Cauley, right, he came along at the end of uh, the second half of the season last year, and he showed that he can play. Uh, he's 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 a He's a versatile big man. Not not that he can shoot, but I mean he's shown moves in the post. You know he's he's very quick. You know, he's quick. a great rebounder, and he has a lot of energy when he, he does. plays. He does. Um, not only that, uh, I was also impressed that the Kings took a shot at uh, Harry Giles or Harry Giles, however you pronounce his last name. Oh yeah, Harry Giles. He was like projected to be a, like a top five guy before you know he got injured and mm-hmm. all that. And I think that was a good move by the Kings. Like 
I think yeah. it's a low risk, high reward, especially where they took him. And um, I think he will be good. Absolutely. I, Absolutely. I mean, I think the Kings had four four picks in this draft. Yeah, and even if he ends up being like a role player, shoot, why, I could see him as a um, a ten point six seven rebound type of guy. A- absolutely, at least minimum. I mean, even if he doesn't come back to what he was able to do, you know, in high school, he's he's still an animal. I right. mean, it, it, if if his if you can only give me eighty percent of Harry Giles. You know, and I took him with, I believe he was drafted close to the end of the first round. Yeah. I mean, that's low risk, high reward, and I'll I'm going to take it. Exactly. I'll take I'm going like, to take it too. How many good role players at least do you get in, you know, around that uh, time of the draft? Not a lot. Not a lot at all. Uh, moving on down the list here, uh, taking sixth overall by the Orlando Magic, uh, the tall fellow from Florida State, <laughs> Jonathan Isaac. This guy. Uh, reminds me of Brandon Ingram in a way, uh, not just in looks, but uh, in his game as well. Uh, I know that uh, Florida State didn't, they didn't, you know, live up to expectations throughout the throughout the uh, NCAA tournament. But uh, most of their success was because of Isaac. Um, I know that he uh, he has a little bit of a jump shot to him. He shot about thirty five percent from three, uh, which isn't which isn't too bad for someone that's seven feet tall. Uh, with the hair, it probably makes him about eight, but um, uh, that's that's neither here or ne- ne- neither here nor there. Um, he's he's a guy that I don't think will be your number one option. I don't I don't think that he's he's that kind of player, but I think that he can be the second or third best player on your team, and you'll be okay. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I don't know too much about him, but I think well from you know his stats and all that, I think he'll be he'll be a good role player at least. Absolutely. I think he'll be a good cleanup guy. You know, he's he's a, he's a great rebounder. I'll give him that. He's he's a great rebounder. Um, he can he can score around the basket. Um, not as not as well as you know the the top tier of uh, of Big draft player. picks that came in. Um, but he he's that guy that can give you a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You know, and he can come in and definitely help your team. I don't I don't think that he hinders your progress by any means. And who knows? Maybe he can uh, progress into you know a star. We just we just have to wait and see. Yeah, exactly. I I agree a hundred percent with you, and I just want to see I just want to see him play and you know see what he can do. Uh, moving on down, uh, taken seventh overall by the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, this this pick was traded to the Chicago Bulls. Uh, Lori Markkinen. I know that we had uh, discussed him briefly last week when we were going over uh, the NBA off season. Um, I, I know I said this before, but I'm going to say it again. If you if you don't know who this is, if you didn't watch him at Arizona, wh- look up his Euroleague highlights, and even if you want to look up his Arizona highlights, this is a this is this is probably the next coming of Dirk Nowitzki, or the closest thing that we're going to get. I mean, <laughs> he, the, the guy is a stud. Yeah, there's not there's not another word for that. Like I've seen some of hi- some of his highlights. I've seen a few Arizona games, and the guy can just play. He can score, get buckets, and he can shoot the three. I think this was uh, one of the steals of the draft. Like the, not the steal of the draft, but like a very very good pick. If if the Bulls were going to give up Jimmy Butler for anything, I you know this is probably one of the best pieces you could have gotten back. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, besides sure. besides anyone you know. They're not. They're not giving up Wiggins. They're not giving up Towns. You know, if you were going to get something back, it would have. It would probably be Laurie Markkinen, someone that can stretch the floor for you. Because we know if there's one thing the Bulls struggled with last year, it was the three point shooting. No one. They didn't. They didn't have shooters. They didn't surround Jimmy with shooters. Okay, I know they had Dwayne Wade, but Dwayne Wade, he's a scorer. He's not really a shooter. And then no, they had not. Rondo. He's not a shooter. Oh my He's God. a facilitator. <laughs> okay. We all know Rondo has a broke jump shot. We, we I'm sorry. Oh my <laughs> the Celtics fan will tell you that. <laughs> it, it was hurt to watch sometimes. I'm sorry. But, but I mean, like I said, you know, if you're going to get anything back, I'm, I'm glad it was marketing. I think it's definitely someone that's going to start day one and play 30-something minutes a game for yes. you. Yes. Uh, because he, he's already doing that for the EuroLeague, you know. Um, the three-point shooting, like I said, is going to help him a lot. This is a guy that shot 42% as a seven-footer in college. That's completely insane. Forty-two percent. I don't. I don't think Dirk. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Has ever shot over forty-two percent for his career. Granted, the three-point line is different, but I mean, coming off of uh, coming off of this kind of season, you would expect him to shoot in the high thirties minimum. Exactly. Um, 
you know, 16 points a game, over seven rebounds. Um, he he needs to work on his defense, but that's yes. something that can always you know come along. Um, right. I just think he'll learn is, in the NBA. He will he will fit in day one, I think, and be just fine. I think he's going to be in the running for rookie of the year with with Ball, Fultz, and Simmons. He's going to have a very productive rookie year, and I will I can see him as an All Star. And 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 if he uh hustles more on the boards. He's a, a, a surefire All Star in the future. Absolutely, and uh, we we thought, um, you know, when the Knicks drafted Kristaps Porzingis, you know, they didn't know what to think. Uh, this this guy is is very similar to Kristaps, except Sim, about yeah. four inches shorter, <laughs> which is definitely a disadvantage. But their games are very similar. Um, you know, Kristaps he, he doesn't like to pass the ball. Yeah. He's not a facilitator, but he can score and he can clean he can clean the glass. Kristaps, I would say, is definitely, if we're comparing rookie seasons, he is the superior defender, but that will come along as he plays more and more in the NBA. Exactly. Like, in the NBA, you have to learn. You know, you have to play defense against these guys. If not, you're just going to get exposed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, this this next pick is someone that I, I definitely do not know anything about. Uh, this was a complete surprise to me. Uh, the New York Knicks taking... I'm probably going to butcher his name. <laughs> Forgive me. Frank Need Nidokina. <laughs> Frank Nidokina, I think is how I say that. Um, he's from France, and that's really all I know about him, Rick. <laughs> I'm on the same boat as you are. But I will say this. I think he's going to be good. I don't know. I just have a feeling. Like, look at what happened with Chris Tops. I think this guy's going to be the same. You think uh, the Knicks will go two for two on these European guys? I I think so. I'm sorry that it's just I just got a feeling. I know that not much was known about Porzingis when they draft him, but usually when you know a European player is drafted and you know he's seven foot three, you can you can have some upside for him. This is a point guard that we don't know anything about other than that he played briefly in the Euro League, and I guess that was enough for the Knicks to say yes, that's our guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these are the Knicks. <laughs> I'm not surprised at all. Like I would have, like if I were the Knicks, I would have taken Dennis Smith Jr. just because I know he's going to be very and I, good. I think that's what Knicks fans were expecting. I think that's what they wanted, but you know, on cue, they missed their opportunity to get a solid player. You know, <laughs> someone that can come in and gel with Kristaps. I believe immediately. Immediately, immediately. Like Dennis Smith Jr. is going to be an amazing player. I think he even might win Rookie of the Year. But you know, the Knicks, you know, they took a gamble, and I really don't see like they don't have anything to lose. You know, they look at look at where they are right now. You I mean, know, it really can't get much worse than this, can it? You might as well just give it a crack and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the Knicks for you. Um, not too much else to say about New York. I'm sorry, uh, any New York Knicks fans out there. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully the nightmare is over soon. I I would really like the Knicks maybe with the next couple of years because it sure as hell isn't happening this year. To make the playoffs. It would be nice just to see um, them uh, compete. You know, New York City, the, the Big Apple. But, you know, I think we got to wait. Playoff New York Nick basketball, no matter what the team is, is always exciting. Always exciting. Madison Square um, Garden. Oh, man. <laughs> but moving, moving on down the list and speaking of Mr. Smith, Dennis Smith Jr. was taken ninth overall by the Dallas Mavericks. And a few were surprised that he fell this low, Rick. What are your thoughts on him? Oh, like – like just how I said, I think he's in. He might be the rookie of the year. He's super athletic. I love his game, and this was the steal of the draft. I'm saying it right now. I have to agree. I have to agree. Like he's a guy that can score. He's gonna be the. He's gonna be the the number one guy in Dallas. I think. He, this is this is definitely if uh, if Dallas was gonna go, you know, which I know they tried to go the route of signing another quote unquote star in Harrison Barnes when they got him from Golden State. Um, I just don't see that working out. I see Barnes as a as a solid third option. Third, yeah, exactly. He's a good player. He's, he's a good, he's a good player. player. He he can ball, but, but when you take him out of the Golden State system, he's not a franchise player. No, you know. Um, I think I think Dennis Smith was a great option to probably replace Dirk after this year. I think this will be his last year, if not next year for sure. He will be forty. Oh my um, goodness, that's and crazy. He he has a chance to, I believe, go up to fifth all time in points. Can you believe that? That's insane. Dirk Nowitzki, top five all time in scoring in the NBA. Who would have expected that? Um I I can tell you that uh the Milwaukee Bucks are probably kicking themselves for trading him on draft night 
um, because he's been very loyal to Dallas through the good times, through the bad times, winning the MVP, winning the title. Um, I, I am just proud overall of Dirk Nowitzki and what he's done throughout his career. One of the best players of all, like one of the greatest players of all time. I'm a big fan. I've, I've been a big fan of Dirk, and it's just crazy, you know, all that time with Dallas, all those points, all those buckets in that one championship that just solidified his status as a legend. Absolutely, absolutely. Definitely one of the greatest players to ever pick up a basketball anywhere in the world. Um, I think I think he'll, uh, he'll teach Dennis – a lot. Um, He'll pass I, a torch to him. Uh, absolutely. Um, I, I know that these are two completely different positions, but I think, you know, when you put Dennis Smith Jr., Harrison Barnes, Yogi Ferrell, Ooh, New Orleans yeah. Noel, uh, Noel that, Seth Curry. And don't Seth, sleep. Seth Curry. Don't sleep on, on uh, Man, the I'm older brother. I'm not sleeping. <laughs> he is, I like him. He can ball. He can, he can yeah. definitely ball. And he, he's, def- he's had a few games last year where – you might have confused him with Seth. <laughs> I, li- I like that Mavericks team. Dennis uh, Smith, Curry, Wesley Matthews, uh, Harrison Barnes. Oh, they Wesley can do some Matthews, damage. Yes, I I know that he's injury prone, but he's always been one of my one of my more favorite players. Oh, so fun to watch! You know, I those, love that. Three. Those Portland days, all those three pointers with with the bow and arrow. Oh. <laughs> the, when, whenever whenever Wesley brought out the bow and arrow, you know it was you know it was about to go down. That was Man, yes. those were great times. Man, I, I love that old Portland team. That was with, such a good team with Batum and Aldridge, Lillard. And just, oh, oh my goodness, that, that was a really that was solid a great team. team. That was a great team. Uh, moving on, um, getting down to uh, the last of the top ten. Uh, Zach Collins was taken uh, by Sacramento and then traded to Portland, Speaking oddly Portland. enough. <laughs> he was traded to Portland. Uh, this is a guy out of Gonzaga that I watched uh, for a couple – I didn't watch any of their regular season games, but I watched them um, in the NCAA tournament. Um, I think I watched their Sweet 16 and their Elite 8 games, I believe. And uh, Collins was uh, – I think throughout the regular season he was he was okay. You know, he wasn't – Anything I I would say special. I mean, don't get me wrong; he's still a good player. But uh, when he when he got to the tournament, that's when we really got to see him, you know, come out of his shell and be the player that Portland wants him to be for the Blazers. Just like you, I haven't seen too much of him, but I saw him in the summer league. He did impress me. I think he's gonna uh, fit well with Portland. They do need um, some more big men. You know, they have Nurkic and all that. And all that, but I think he he can fit well in there with them. He Absolutely. can learn. He can learn a lot. Absolutely, and I, he can contribute. I think uh, this will only further add to Portland's three point barrage that they always hit you with with Lillard and McCollum. Uh, he shot he shot forty eight percent. Now I'm not sure how many he took, but he shot forty eight percent from three for this Gonzaga team. Um, now if he can translate that anything close to forty eight percent in the NBA, even if he's only taken. You know, two, three, four shots a game. They got to steal that. I mean, that's that's guaranteed points, and I think that's what Portland needs. His defense also averaging almost two blocks a game. I think really helps solidify that Portland team as a playoff team. To me, putting him alongside Yusuf Nurkic, I think you have a, a big man tandem there that can that can really cause some havoc in the Western Conference. Oh my goodness, yes, Lillard, McCollum, and then Nurkic and Collins. That can be a scary team. There's a lot of teams on the come up in the West. Which is already stacked in hell. It's just it's it's gonna be a great season. I know we reiterated that last week over and over again, but I'm I'm really excited for this season. Even if you know we already pretty much know the outcome of you know the season, but it's gonna be fun to watch the regular season. Let me emphasize that the regular season is gonna be interesting uh, with all the new players and new faces on different teams. Oh man, it's gonna be a really fun season. Yes, it is. Um, we did have before we before we wrap it up here. We did have two honorable mentions that uh, we couldn't we couldn't leave off the list here. And uh, the first one is Malik Monk uh, was actually oddly enough taken eleventh overall uh, by the Charlotte Hornets out of Kentucky. I was so disappointed to see this guy fall out of the top ten. I thought for sure was going to be a top six or seven pick. Same, same. Ah, uh, just. Watching him play at Kentucky, one of one of probably the most entertaining sharpshooters in college basketball, and I can't wait to see him play for Charlotte. Oh my goodness, this guy's just a flat out score. And you know, the NBA, that's what it is right now. People just getting buckets, hitting those three pointers. He's gonna be really nice. And I he was another guy I thought the Knicks were gonna take, either him or Dennis Smith Jr. I I, I believe I believe you're right. I think I heard um some some uh, analysis during the draft that that's who they were eyeballing was Malik Monk, and then 
they just they just didn't take him. I really wanted the Knicks to take Dennis Smith, but had Malik Monk gone there, I think that would have helped them out just as much. Just as much, you know. He could have learned so much from Melo, you know. And, both and this was this is a guy that was averaging forty percent from three as a sharpshooter, and he was shooting from deep. I mean, this wasn't just college range. This was NBA range three shooting forty percent. Man, the guy's insane at uh, scoring. He it's. I think he's the best scorer in the class. I mean, he's he's a machine. He's an absolute machine, especially being the second option on that Kentucky team, averaging twenty points a game. Twenty points a game as a second option translates to the NBA very easily, <laughs> very easily. And I'm excited for this guy. Man, you're gonna see him get a lot, score a lot of points in the NBA. You will, you will definitely be, uh, you'll definitely see me tuning into some more Charlotte Hornets games this year. Um, him and Kemba. Ooh. I think I think him and Kemba Walker, as well with Dwight Howard. Uh, the development there for this season could be something special. Oh, yeah, it is going to be. I really like that backcourt. That's going to be a backcourt of uh, a future all-star type of backcourt, like both of them being all-star. Absolutely. And then uh, you have, uh, you know, the defense of Marvin Williams and Michael Kidd Gilchrist. You know, they're not gifted offensively. We know that. No, no, I think but... MKG has the most broken jump shot in all the oh, basketball. Man. but That's <laughs> atrocious. <laughs> uh, but that defense will save them. I think, I think Charlotte's going to be one of – you know, as well as Philly, to, for teams to watch in the East, that's, there's another one for you is Charlotte. Yeah, they're they're going to be exactly. great. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, they're, they are going to be. And just with Kemba, Kemba's a fun player to watch. I've been oh, a fan always. of Kemba since college. Since college Even days. in the Bobcat days. Oh, it was, my goodness. When the team was terrible. If there was one highlight, it was Kemba Walker. Cardiac Kemba. Fun player <laughs> to watch. Uh, our, last guy, our last guy that we want to talk about, we don't even have him on our sheets here. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> being – being fans of uh, the University of Illinois basketball program, um, I know I've personally, and I know you, Rick, have uh, have followed this guy uh, for a little while now. Uh, Brandon Paul from the <laughs> 2013 Fighting Illini. Yes, that was four years ago. Man. Uh, he has been he has been grinding and grinding and grinding, trying to get into the National Basketball Association. He's played in the D League. He's played in the Euro League. And this year, he he finally balled out. He finally balled out in the summer league. <laughs> that man has been grinding like if he were a skateboarder. <laughs> man. And just how he said early on the show, what better team than the Spurs to go into? I think it's the perfect situation for him because he's really developed into a sharpshooter, uh, especially in the summer league, you know. I, I watched him drop six, seven three-pointers in two consecutive <laughs> games, you know. I and mean, this is a guy that – has has really worked hard, you know. I think it really bothered him that he he didn't go undrafted, that he didn't hear his name called four years ago, and he, it's finally here. You know, he's he's 27 years old, and he's finally getting his shot to be, you know, an NBA player. You know, his his dreams are finally coming true. You at least got to give him a chance, because you know, if you've been doing that for four years, chasing that dream, you know, you know they want it. And I think the Spurs will bring the best out of him, and he'll be in the NBA for a while. I think it's a beautiful thing that he went to the Spurs because you know he's going to get playing time he's during gonna... the regular season. The Spurs play every they they go nine men deep in the rotation. <laughs> I mean, exactly. He he will play whether it's for you know two or three minutes. I mean, he's going to see some action, and uh, if he can prove himself, he might even move up in the depth chart to be you know the seventh or eighth man. And we're just we're really excited to and see I could Brandon. See him. I could see yes. him moving up. Absolutely. We're very excited to see Brandon in the league. Being a factor for um, the Spurs, man, that'd be something. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but that's going to do it today. Um, we're going to wrap it up here. And uh, we uh, we hope you enjoyed today's show. Um, we'll come to you next week with uh, some new topics and uh, maybe talk a little bit more about the rookies. But uh, until then, uh, we hope you enjoyed. Uh, my name is Gavin Campbell and uh, always alongside. My name's Ricardo Vargas, and uh, <laughs> follow, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, GRCV Hoops. We'll be tweeting out the links of the podcast. You can find it on iTunes as well, GRCV Hoops. And uh, I'll see. we'll see you next weekend. Have a good week. Peace. Peace.